Hi everybody, and welcome to the 2020 RIS5 Summit. My name is Denis Nativel, and I'm leading the Platform Security Group at Sci5. Before I start, I wanted to tell you that I'm very happy to be part of this event, even if it feels a bit weird to present remotely. I hope that we can all meet together in person next year to exchange and share around RIS5. Today, I'd like to walk you through some of the challenges that I found when migrating away from ARM to RIS5, especially when it comes to security. You will find out that some simple yet powerful mechanisms can be used to enable a seamless transition. Following the recent m and announcement that are shaking the industry, it becomes clear that the world is accelerating its move to RISC-V. This brings several challenges and fears that need to be addressed. Most people are expecting feature parity and similar if not better performance level on RISC-V. sci has addressed this by providing an extensive RISC-V product portfolio to match the existing ARM offering. The software ecosystem also plays a big role when transitioning away from an existing platform. To that extent, the entire RISC V community has done a tremendous job to quickly develop a strong, open source minded ecosystem that includes compiler, stacks, authors, and Linux. Security is also a very important checkbox that requires some attention during the migration. End to end encryption, secure boot, key storage, device ownership, over the updates and third party developments have brought a lot of security challenges to the embedded world in order to make sure that assets are not compromised. Most industries have adopted the Trusted Executive Environment, or TEE, approach. So what is a TEE? Uh, Wikipedia says that it is a secure area of a main processor, an isolated execution environment that provides security features such as isolated execution, integrity of applications executing with the TEE, and confidentiality of their assets. In other words, a TEE guarantees the authenticity of the executed code, the integrity of the runtime state, and the confidentiality of its code, data, and runtime states. A TEE usually coexists with a rich execution environment, or REE, for better separation of the OS, application, and assets. Over the years, ARM has been implementing and patching a proprietary solution called Trustzone. Trustzone can be used to implement a TEE or REE environment, so it can't be ignored when migrating to RISC-V. So let's focus on the ARM V8 Trustzone security architecture and see what it provides. Trustzone offers different exception levels combined with the infamous NS bits to have a secure and non-secure world. This allows trusted and non-trusted kernels to run on the same CPU and also allows to separate privileges between the application and tasks running on each kernel. Overall, this binary representation of the world requires to think about the system partitioning very carefully and put assets in the right bucket. One of the limitations we can observe here is that two tasks within the same exception level are not isolated from each other. This is fine if the code is audited and somewhat trusted, but also increase the attack surface and potential side effects. Nevertheless, Trust Zone has been fairly popular and we are seeing customers coming to us for risk fiber migration and asking for similar security partitioning. So what we're looking for is a way to emulate ARM Trust Zone architecture without breaking our beloved RISC-V ISA. That means not adding the NS bit and the complexity it brings to the RISC-V core. The PMP found in the RISC-V can be used to enforce protection, but it doesn't scale very well across multiple cores because you need to maintain the same PMP configuration or call all those cores and thus in a secure way. The PMP is also limited to the CPU and doesn't protect other non-RISC-V bus masters. Last year, we announced Sci-5 WorldGuard that is an open, fine-grained security model for providing both code and data isolation. WorldGuard provides hardware-enforced mechanisms to protect cores, cache, interconnects, peripherals, and memories. WorldGuard is an open specification that has been shared with the RISC-V Foundation. We are hoping to see a broader adoption from other RISC-V vendors so we can raise the security level of all RISC-V implementations. WorldGuard has been designed to be a carbon copy of TrustZone and more importantly, it doesn't break the RISC-V ISA. Instead, it aims to go beyond Trezon and simplify your system partitioning by offering a virtually unlimited number of containers where you store your asset, whether, whether it is code, data, or peripherals. Before I show you how WorldGuard can be used to emulate ARM Trezon, let me give you a quick refresh on how WorldGuard actually works. WorldGuard is a relatively simple mechanism that tags or marks all transactions issued by a core or any other bus masters, such as a DMA controller or FPGA, for example. An ID 
called world ID is added to the transactions and is propagated through the different caches and interconnect. At the destination, we can find filters that enforce access control policy against a list of authorized world IDs. A world ID filter uh, enables fine grained control access on a peripheral that can be exclusive to a world ID or shared between different world IDs. The world guide PMP is similar to the PMP found in the core but adds an extra level of control where each defined memory region can be dedicated to a world or shared between different worlds with read-only or read-write privileges. There are two possible modes of operations. The first one is called core-driven, where a single world ID is assigned to a single core or shared between multiple cores. The second mode of operation is even more interesting, since it gives us the option to assign a world ID to not only to a core, but also to a task running on that particular core. The lightweight software security monitor runs in RISC V machine mode and configures a world ID assigned to each privilege level. For the user mode, it is possible to set up a range of authorized world ID instead of a static value. The auto scheduler then runs in supervisor mode. When switching tasks, it can pick and choose an authorized world ID from for the upcoming task. The transactions are, the, are then automatically marked with a proper world ID, starting with the L1 cache, where one task cannot stoop another, another task memory or cache line. The last level cache also checks that the cache line that has been fetched by a core carries the proper world ID. This gives us a lot of flexibility and allows us to simplify the system, system partitioning. As a side effect, it also gives us an option to match ARM trust zone security domains. Since we have so many worlds to play with, it is very trivial to match each and every exception level found in Antra Zone and associate them with our existing RISC V privilege modes. The notion of secure and non secure world disappears in favor of discrete worlds. The exception level 3 or EL3 that works in monitor mode on ARM runs in RISC V machine mode. The trusted kernel or rich OS run in RISC V supervisor mode, where the secure and non secure application both run in RISC V user mode. As you can see, we can still maintain the artificial notion of secure and normal worlds found in Trust Zone, and could even expand it with more containers that would provide intermediate trust levels such as most secure, less secure, and so on. One of the immediate benefits of having more fine-grained isolation is that we can even separate some of the sensitive components such as root of trust or secure boot from the separation kernel that becomes the most tr trusted piece of code during runtime. We can also have tasks running at the same privilege level to be isolated from each other, so they can have their own memory and peripheral space and cannot interact with each other. A full worker deployment includes a number of markers. Some of them are found in the RISC V L1 cache. Other markers can be found on external AXI masters, such as DMA controller, for example. Outside the RISC V core complex, world IDs are carried over the AXI bus using a free available field that AXI offer. Inside the core complex, we use Tiling as a local interconnect that also carries world ID using some user fields. We have developed Tiling to AXI world guard mappers and AXI to Tiling world guard mappers to properly carry the world ID across multiple types of interconnects. At the destination, we have world guard PMPs to protect memories and world guard filters to protect peripherals. We can match trust zone security model by using this architecture and map trust zone exception level and privileges to different world ID. This is the ideal situation on fresh new designs where the whole world guard is deployed. However, sometimes the design window doesn't allow such significant change. So being able to migrate to a new ISA by step is preferred. There is a fairly simple way to use world guard to swap an existing trust and enable ARM core by a RISC V core while keeping other ARM cores around. This greatly limits the risk of changing the security model or the hardware system architecture. Here is an implementation that combines the full trust zone environment and a RISC V subsystem. ARM cores, bus master, memories, and peripherals found in the trust zone area are fully trust zone aware and don't know anything about wall guard. The trust zone environment makes use of the exploit bits carrying the security and privilege information. In the wall guard area, we use wall ID to enforce isolation and map to trust zone. As a bonus, Sci5 is offering a powerful debug and trace solution called Sci5 Insight and that is not only Nexus 5001 compliant, but also fully compatible with ARM core site. So you have an heterogeneous debugging solution for both your RISC-V and ARM cores. 
To enable the translation from Trezon to WorldGuard, and vice versa, we develop a new kind of WorldGuard mappers. On the front port, we can find a Trezon to tiling mapper that maps incoming transactions from the Trezon area and that makes use of the export bits to a number of corresponding world ID. On the outbound ports, such as memory, peripherals, and system ports, we need to have mappers that convert all the world ID consumed inside the RISC-5 core complex to a corresponding export 0 and export 1 combination found on the XI bus. Each world ID has a dedicated entry in a mapping table to assign the proper export 0 and export 1 bits. This makes it possible to group a number of world ID under one of the ARM chosen exception level and enforce a consistent security policy between the two areas. In some situations, it might be required to not only swap an ARM core by a RISC-5 core, but also to swap a chosen enabled memory or peripheral by a world guide enabled version. By using the right mapper, we can mix and match chosen enabled peripherals or memory with a world guide enabled version to enable more fine-grained control and flexibility on the system partitioning. In this example, we have a bunch of ARM cores on the front port as well as chosen enabled APB peripherals. The rest of the system is mostly based around world guard enabled cores and peripherals. It might be tempting to trick the RISC-5 core to make it look like Trezon, but that would come at the expensive price of breaking the RISC-5 ISA. This is the last thing we need to promote our RISC-5 core while maintaining consistency across different implementations. The good news is that world guard doesn't break the RISC-5 ISA, WorldGuard is a powerful way to enforce hardware isolation. It makes it possible to match ARM Trezon security model while simplifying software migration and validation. It also provides an extra level of protection for tasks running at the same privilege level. WorldGuard enables existing hardware and software environments to be ported over to RIS-5. It gives an option to swap an ARM core by a RIS-5 core without compromising the surrounding environment that might still contain some Trezon enabled ARM cores. Being able to mix and match ARM and RISC-5 core while maintaining a Trojan compatibility can truly accelerate the adoption and, more importantly, the deployment of the RISC-5 ISA. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. A WorldGuard white paper as well as an application note on emulating Trojan with WorldGuard are available today. Please do not hesitate to get back to us if you have any question. In the meantime, I wish you a great virtual RISC-5 summit. Stay safe. Goodbye.